Hi friends, Sam here with Happily Hooked. So today we have a new type of tip and trick video. I'm going to be helping you guys crochet with like novelty yarns or textured yarns or things like that. So we have some of this Baby Soft uh, Boucle, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, I said it wrong in the last video, it's totally okay. But we're, I'm going to show you how to work with this one and I have a fur type yarn that we're going to crochet with as well just so I can show you guys a couple tips and tricks on how to work with this because it's a lot of fun. Um, I love the textured yarns. I have so many gorgeous patterns already in mind that I want to make with them. Um, but they are kind of tricky. So I'm going to grab my hook. I'm going to grab a couple different types of like textured or novelty yarns and we're going to see what we can come up with today. Hi friends, don't forget, when you click the link below and subscribe today to join Happily Hooked Magazine, not only are you getting access to the coolest crochet community on the internet, you're also getting this amazing project bag that I use every single day and these ergonomic hooks. So click the link below, subscribe today, and I cannot wait to see you in the community. All right, so like I said, today I'm going to show you all how to work with like novelty yarn or like not smooth normal yarn. So I've got the Baby Soft Boucle, which is one of my favorites, but it's kind of hard to work with because as you can see, it's got like all these little fuzzies on it. And like eyelash yarn is super tough to work with. Scrubby yarn is just hard on your hands anyway. Um, but these are just a couple tips and tricks that I use when working with yarn that I'm not quite obsessed with working with, but I love how it looks when it's done up. I also have some of the go for faux yarn too because this is also another tricky one to work with um but these tips obviously this it varies on how you crochet but i did want to show you a couple different ways to do it so one of the things that i recommend the most is obviously working in bright lighting there is no way i'm going to see my stitches with this if it is dark like just not going to work um and also Make sure that your yarn is all smoothed out and it's ready to go. Most of the time I would cake it. This I've already unwound because you just want to make sure that you're not having to fight tangles as you go. Um, another trick is make sure that you are using a bigger hook size than what it calls for. So this yarn recommends a six and a half millimeter crochet hook. I would do a six and a half or a seven um, or even up to an eight because it's not the smoothest to work with. So I've got my eight millimeter hook here and this makes it so much easier to see my stitches. They're still tough to see, but at least I can feel for them because I have a bigger a bigger hole to work with. Now, if you are using a specific yarn and following a pattern, make sure you swatch. You make a gauge swatch if you're going to go up on your hook size. Um, I don't want you to make something and have it be like four sizes too big because you went too much too big on your hooks. Um, another thing to do is so this is a light colored yarn, and when using a light colored hook to go with a light colored yarn. It makes it a little trickier to see when I start getting into doing bigger stitches. I can't quite see as well where my yarn is, but you can grab a hook that has a different darker color. This is obviously not the right size hook. Please don't come for me. Um, but I can at least see the stitches and the loops on the hook a lot clearer so I can see what it looks like. It's just a little bit harder to do when the hook almost matches the yarn color. And I recommend this for any kind of yarn, not just novelty yarn. Um, another fun trick that I learned, I don't remember where I saw this from, um, but you take your your fancy yarn. This works really well when working with like eyelash yarn. I just don't happen to have any on hand right now. But if you get another yarn that's more of a solid yarn, um, I would probably match it a little bit better in color than this. This is just what I had right underneath my desk. But if you hold these two together, you will be able to see your stitches so much easier.
And like I said, this works really great for um, eyelash yarn because it's so thin. But now I can see my loops. So this is gray. It's not going to look as pretty. If I had a lighter color or like a white yarn would look really nice with the boucle yarn. But it still leaves enough texture from the boucle that it doesn't take away from what I was wanting. I almost really like the gray with the lavender anyway. But it still gives you that fun texture without losing your stitches. A lot of times when I'm working with this yarn, you can't see the stitches on top. So you kind of have to feel for them. So all I recommend when working with novelty yarn is obviously give yourself a little bit of grace because this is tricky. This yarn is not the easiest to work with. But if your count is coming out normal, so say we chain four, five, six, seven, eight, and then I want to make sure I have five half double crochets. So one, two, three, four, five. It, they don't necessarily have to be in the right stitches. So if you feel like there's a hole here, there's a gap, so I'm going to half double crochet in that gap instead of working in the stitches. Two, three, four, five. And obviously this is loose, like it's going to be loose because this yarn is tiny and I'm using an eight millimeter hook. Um, but if you work in the stitches, it's hard to find them. You can, you can pull them apart and pull the, the strands apart and this would be a stitch. There's a bar on the bottom and then two on the top. But it is trickier to find those and if you're trying to get something done in a decent amount of time, I, it's hard. It's really hard to do that. So I recommend working in between the stitches. Obviously don't tangle your yarn up like this. That's not going to help you either. Um, but work in between the stitches. As long as the stitch count matches, it's going to be okay. Um, anybody looking at the project is not going to be able to tell that you didn't go into every single stitch because they're not going to be able to find them either. So just be patient with yourself. Um, if you want to find all of the stitches, go for it. You, it. They're there. You can see them. It's just not very easy to see them. And it's the same when, let me grab the gopher faux. So it's the same when working with this yarn. So working up gopher faux, it's, this is the thick and quick too, which makes it even better. You really have to use your fingers on this yarn to feel any of the stitches. Like it's pretty solid. So you have to wiggle your fingers in to find the tops of the chain. So it's there and you, if you come in here, you can pull apart the bars on the stitch. So this right here 
would be one stitch. And it's, it's nice with the fur yarn because you can feel for the holes in it. But you cannot see them. So if it's easier for you to go in between the stitches, do it. It's not, it is not a big deal. You do whatever makes it easier for you to work with this yarn. I know that a lot of people love to use it, but it's just really tough. Um, so these are just my, what I do when I'm working with it. You do not have to follow these rules. If they don't help you, I totally apologize. But if you have any tips for working with novelty yarn or fancy yarn, leave those in the comments below. I would love to see them. Um, hey, they might help me. So that is my little tutorial slash tip and trick on how to work with this cool yarn. And if you have any other questions, leave those in the comments below. And if not, I will see you all in the next video. Bye!